I have Coach Andrew Cohen on the podcast. Thanks for coming on, Coach. Yeah, thanks for having me. Exciting. Yes, sir. So Coach Cohen, he actually started off as a college coach, and he has 22 years of experience at the FCS level and high-level Division three programs such as Bowdoin, Hamilton College, and, and at the FCS level, Bucknell, Columbia, and, and a few other schools as well. So, Coach Cohen, so as a former college coach, can you share your perspective about recruiting and just share what you think college coaches today should be doing to maximize recruiting? I think that when I was most successful and I was on staffs that were most successful, we obviously looked at the film and we obviously had in-person evaluations, but evaluating character like really asking tough questions of the recruits to find out what their work ethic is what their character is what their toughness is i used to almost try to like scare the student athlete and tell them how hard it was going to be and how hard i'm going to be on you however if you want to be the best football player possible and have the chance to be the best student athlete in general then you're going to want to play for me. And it was a little bit cocky, but I, I didn't pull any punches about me being hard on my players. I was a defensive coach and I was definitely a yelling, aggressive, uh, tough type of tough love type of coach, but I put, put my arm around them and, and take care of them. So I, I do think that you have to find out what, what makes a kid tick. So many kids today I talk to, I think, are so obsessed with playing division one football. And then I'll say, well, what happens if we can only get you a division two? And then sometimes they'll respond, well, then I don't, I don't think I'll play. That can that would concern me as a coach. Either you love to play and you'll play in the backyard division eight, <laughs> right. or, or or you'll play division one. But either way, you want to play. I I played division three football. I wasn't a great player by any means, but I played in college and I'm, um, that's really important to me. So I would just try to find out the ins and the outs. And I would ask as many people as possible, the head coach, the principal, the guidance people, the phys ed teachers, uh, opponent coaches. Hey, was this kid a good player? Was he a dominant player? Was he a good sport? Did you hear anything negative about him? I just always thought, if I'm bringing in a student athlete into the program, my name is on that person as well as their own. So right. hopefully that's the right direction you're looking for. I don't think you could do enough research. And today the offers are coming earlier and earlier, and it's giving you less and less time if you want to get in the mix to get to know them as people, as student athletes. And that's you know frustrating to some people because they, they want to do the right job, but if they don't put their their hat in the ring, then they might not ever get a chance to get that, that student right. athlete. So it is tough. It is tougher today than it was when I was doing it 10, 12 years ago. Right. So yeah. can you talk a little bit more about some of those changes, maybe with the, the transfer portal and, and how recruiting in general has maybe shifted over the past like three to five years? Yeah, for sure. And that's about perfect, right about the COVID time. So you know, I run Get Recruited Consulting and we help kids get into college. And it's been even more busy with the student athletes because they're finding so many kids are going in, into the portal. You know, the portal is where you're a college kid and you want to transfer. And now you can go in a portal. Um, no penalty for transferring. And the college coaches can reach directly out to you. A number that was given to me by an NCAA person recently was alarming. And that is, 9,000 kids this past year, football players, put themselves in the portal. Wow. And I think it's made it so much more competitive now because now you're not only competing against the high school kids, but now you're competing against kids that are in college, two to four years older than you, more mature mentally and physically. And they, if they have film to show they've done it at the college level, that's going to be like, hey, you know, proof in the pudding right there. I've already done it in college. Where the high right. school kids, we're still more of a projection that they can do it. So right. I think that's really changed. 
every staff has a different philosophy. I think there are certain schools that feel we don't need to go on the portal on a regular basis, but maybe we'll just fill some needs. Or maybe we will fill it with positions that we lose. Or if we even lose a kid in a portal, let's replace it with a kid in a portal. So we're replacing one kid with experience with another student athlete with experience. You know what I mean? Right. But philosophically, I mean, you look at Deion Sanders and obviously Colorado hasn't been the program that they want to be. And he believes, hey, I'm, I want to fix it immediately. And I think that, you know, that that could go either way. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't think they're going to fire him right away. So some people would say, hey, be patient, build a program right and get some portal kids. But right now, I don't, I don't even have the numbers, but they're they're astronomical. How many kids that they're taking in the portal? There are plenty right. of good schools that they're, half their class is portal. So it, it's really now come if you want to be a division one when i say division one fcs or fbs if you want to be a part of that then you really need to start to earlier start the process and get on the radar of the coaches because they're already having all these kids that are portal kids that they're getting immediately yeah and and from a player's perspective this really just goes to show you how much more prepared you actually have to be at an earlier age and and from your experience as being a football coach in the past and, and obviously still being involved in the game now, can you talk about from a player's perspective how important it is to, to maybe start focusing earlier on and, and some of the things such as weight training and just getting, getting their body and, and also their minds prepared earlier on? Yeah, and, and so let's even start before you know, with academics. So the ninth grade is the first year that it officially counts, right? And so, you know, when when I ask a kid on the phone, what's his grade point average, and he doesn't know, that's alarming to me. You know, you need to know what your grades are. You need to be invested to work on them. The higher your grades are, the more marketable you are. So that's one. And then obviously, even, you know, I saw Justin play in high school, he was a really good player at Malvern. I enjoyed watching you guys play then. And but even, you know, whatever it is, six years ago when you were in high school, is that about right? Six, seven, yeah. Around there? Yeah, I'm I'm twenty. Um, so just about. Okay. Even since then, bigger, stronger, faster all the time. But the biggest difference, hopefully this answers your question. The biggest difference from the highest level, you know, from FBS down. A lot of times it's just overall athleticism. Athleticism included in that is flexibility. Not just your ability to touch your toes and your hamstrings, but your your hip flexion, your ankle flexion, where can you comfortably bend? You know, you'll constantly hear college coaches say, ah, eh, we're not interested in him. He's too tight. He's stiff. So you gotta start working on your flexibility as soon as possible. I truly believe the longer you wait, to improve your flexibility, then the tougher it's going to be as you get bigger and stronger. They right. can get you stronger most of the time. They look at your frame, they can say, hey, we can get him stronger. But something that's more genetic is how well does he bend? How quick are your feet? So right now in ninth grade, you got to be working on jump rope, on ladders, on agility drills, because again, you like linear straight ahead speed's great. But even more important is your ability to change directions, your ability to move laterally. You know, if you're an offensive lineman and you are 6'4 or taller, you are 275 pounds or more, and you can bend easily, you're not stiff, and move your feet, you are getting a scholarship. Right. If you can do that, those things, plus your physical – then you're an FBS guy. You'll hear tons of people say, oh, my son was better. You know, he killed that lineman. He probably did, but your son is 6'2", 270, and has a ceiling a lot lower than the 6'7", 290 kid who can bend and move his feet, whose ceiling, once he gets stronger and grows into his body, is going to be a lot higher. Right. So I guess what I'm getting at is, obviously the lifting is extremely important still that you're getting stronger, but I would put in front of that, the flexibility, the grades, and, you know, the speed training, foot speed and agility. You know, I think that most 
kids, if they're really into football, they're going to lift. But I don't know how many are going to work on the stretching and on the speed work. It's not as fun. I didn't do it as much. Yeah. How about you? Did you? Yeah. I mean, you love to no, lift. No, that's you're a big guy. Yeah, exactly. You're exactly right. Like in high school, the cool thing to do is go lift, but but nobody's over there stretching or, or working on their their foot speed, which is what. Well, yeah. How about working on your skill set? So what does that mean? Well, I'm a defensive back. It's great that I'm fast, but I got to work on my back pedal, on my weaving. I got to work on my ability to trans to transfer from back to forwards, back to then turn and run. You know, I'm an offensive lineman. I got to work on my kick slide. I got to work on my pulling. You got to work on your physical traits that are specific to your position as well. Some high schools are graced with a great staff that works on all that, but a lot of high schools might, might be work, not working on all that. You have to work on the skills that pertain to your specific position. Exactly. Yeah. So with, with get recruited consulting. So can you just share a little bit about that and the, the philosophies that, that you've used from your coaching days in, in get recruited? Sure. So I, I definitely, I'm a, I'm a to the point person, which some people love and some people definitely get turned off, but um, I'm going to be very upfront, accurate, and honest with our evaluation of a student athlete so we're not taking on a student athlete until we discuss with them what level of play is going to be realistic and we lose clients because of that whether they flat out tell us right there or just they never get back to us because let's be realistic every everyone every parent and every student athlete would like to be a division one player so what we're doing is first watching their film and making sure that we can help them and place them at a level that's realistic. And then from there, what makes us very unique is we use our contacts to the student athlete's advantage. So we directly are reaching out to the college coaches. We're calling them directly on their work number, on their cell number. We have over 3000 cells, so we're texting them. And then we can have a whole nother show on social media that's become the number one way that college coaches are finding the student athletes today and communicating with them as well. Um, we've partnered with a company, GoMVB, uh, a great company that's a, a marketing company, and they do a lot of our social media, uh, Twitter being number one for football, but we use all social media. And we're still doing it ourselves, but between the two of us, we have over 125,000 followers. So Every time we're posting our players, thousands of coaches are seeing it. But I think it starts out, you need a true evaluation of what level your son can play and then what schools can he get in academically. Yeah. Or else you're wasting a lot of time. So we're we're helping them make a game plan. You know, do you want a big school, small country setting, city, high academics, high football but we're putting everything together. And we start off with an hour plus meeting where we put a plan of what schools fit. And then we're attacking it through email, phone calls, text messages, direct messages on Twitter. We hit every angle possible to get our direct answers. And in the long run, we like to believe we save most of our families a lot of money by going to the right camps. And planning for camps, we can go on and on for that as well. But Today, all the scholarship schools want you to go to their camps. And as a student athlete, you can't go to them all. So you have to find out in advance, do they have sincere interest or not? And if yeah. they do, you can go to their camp. If not, I, I would not. We suggest our clients do not go to the camp right. if they're not really interested. So that's kind so, of it in a nutshell. I mean, yeah. 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 So I, I can tell you from experience the the value of of working hard, but at the same time being realistic. So for, for me personally, I'm, I'm five foot 10. So that, that kind of excluded me playing defensive line from being a big time recruit because I was, I was, I didn't have the size. So can you talk a little bit about that and how parents can be, can be realistic, but at the same time, be cognizant of, of not killing a kid's dreams or anything like that? 
it's hard. That's where sometimes I do a better job than other times. But um, so you were realistic. You also played for a good program where your mentors knew what it took to play at different levels. You know, we work with Coach Brady, who you're close with as well. He's on our staff and he coached in college and he understood what it took, you know, size wise and athletically. No matter how good you were, Justin, you know, you weren't going to be able to play Division One as a 5'10 defensive lineman. You yeah. know, unfortunately, we will say when you're in that, you know, if you're six foot as a defensive lineman, you can play Division One. There's not a lot of them. But if you're accurate six foot, then we'll tell them, but you have to be really dynamic. You have to be really athletic. You have to have the ability to play at 290 because that's how big they have to be right now. You know, so, but we're trying to project for the different levels, what height and what weight they would need to be to play. And then the problem then becomes families will look at a roster and say, well, they have a guy that's, that's only this tall. They do, but he could be a walk on or he could be unbelievably talented, but that's not normally the case. You know, the offensive lineman, for instance, and even FCS is six, three plus. I'd say FBS is the same, but more so 6'4 plus probably. And they might take a guy, but he's probably a guy that was a really good defensive lineman and might be able to play defensive line athletically, but it, right. but you can always move him and play center if he can. So I, I think that it's hard, but we have to be honest with ourselves and and realistic. And also, when you're looking at the different schools, do they show a track record? You know what I mean? So – my brother coaches at Wake Forest, which is SC, uh, sorry, ACC, really good football, really good academics. When you watch them play on the defensive line, almost all their defensive tackles look the same. They're all 6'1", 305, maybe six foot and a half, maybe six one and a half, but they're not usually taller and they're not any shorter than that. And that's that's their philosophy. You know what I mean? They'll get guys that can get off the football and play the run and and that's what they're looking for. So uh, I think strategically, every staff's a little different. And some schools might take a little shorter guy at this position or that position. But as a rule, they they have a philosophy in what they're looking for. Yeah. You know, but it's, it, you know, my job can be very tough trying to explain that to a student athlete or his parent when their kid is physically in high school a better player. Like I'm sure for you, Justin. There were guys that were 6'4", even guys on your own team that you probably did a number on in high school, but right. yet that kid got a scholarship and you didn't. Right. You know? And and that could be very hard to explain to somebody. Does that make sense? Definitely does. And and I 100% agree. It's it's a matter of of being being realistic because at the Division three level, you have some unbelievably – high academic schools like like Gettysburg College or like in in the Centennial Conference like Dickinson or or FNM or Hopkins so it's a matter of prioritizing what's what's important to you and and I think for me personally coach Brady at Malvern he really gave me a good idea that I needed to focus on academics and and I got a an unbelievable education at Gettysburg as a result of that. You you know, what we're trying to help families do is find the right fit. And the right fit means socially, it means distance from home, level of football, level of academics. What's your major? Do they have a good major for you? You know, so you're trying to put everything together. And I, I tell people it's not about who's got the best football program, who's got – excuse me, the highest rated academics. I think it's a combination of everything. You know what I mean? And then going to a place that you feel you can be successful is really important. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So now, now that we're wrapping up here, coach, is, is there anything else you wanted to share with the audience about, about get recruited advice or, or anything else? Yeah, I think the process has to start like we're talking about here with a, an honest and a professional evaluation of your film. So what I'm going to offer, if it's okay with you, Justin, I'm going to offer a free recruiting consultation. Anyone that 
that's listening now or later can can reach me, okay, or make an appointment. He's going to put a link out there that they can sign up for an appointment. Well, I'll go over their film and answer their questions, but I'm also going to offer a free post on our Twitter page, which has 30,000 followers. But I truly believe that you're crazy not to get an evaluation and from someone like myself who's coached Division One, Two, II, and Three, and find out what level of play you are now. And if you're young enough, you know, if you're a junior or a sophomore, I'll be able to tell you, well, if you want to play at a higher level, you have to work on A, B, and C. And I, I, I think that's crucial. Firstly, I'm going to give my phone number is 570-428-2872. That's my cell. I always answer it directly. You're welcome to call me. You'll have a link, right? The link I gave you with uh, my calendar. Yes. And, and I'll include that. that. Yeah. I'll include your cell phone and email in the in the link as Perfect. well. Yeah. yeah. So I, I do believe that's, that's huge. There's nothing I'm gaining from it. It's absolutely free. But I do think, you know, I, I run a business, but I want to help kids and I want to see players reach their dreams. You know, I mean, I wasn't a great player. I was a five, seven and a half linebacker, but I played division three football, had a great experience. And I'll remember that for the rest of my life, you know, and right. some of the best relationships you have are kids that you, you played either high school football with or, or uh, college football with. And uh, I'm really happy I was able to do that. Yeah. And, and just to go off of coach Cohen's point, I can tell you from experience too, that, that he genuinely cares and he's going to be somebody who can actually help you. And, and he has your best interest in mind. So we're, we're excited to be able to partner with him. So, um, so yeah, check, check out what coach Cohen has to offer using the link in the, in the description here and coach Cohen, it's always a pleasure. Thank you again for, for coming on today. Thanks for having me. I had a great time. Great questions. Uh -huh.